Welcome back to another YouTube Tuesday. My name is Derek, and today we're going to be going over a video from the channel Shenzhen JC Innovation Device Co. Ltd. If you aren't aware, they are the company that supplies all of the JC products like JC Drawing and all of the JC sold items on mobilecentrics.com. Today we're going to be watching a video titled V1S Face ID Tag On Repair FPC Operation Video. It's a fairly short one. It's about a year old, but hopefully it'll give you an insight into some of these tools if you haven't already started using them. So let's get into the video. JCID Face ID Tag on Repair FPC. No need to solder and align. Use directly after activating, burning and installing. Even beginners can fix Face ID easily. The Face ID of this 12 Pro Max is unavailable. Let's exclude infrared and floodlight problems first. Connect mobile phone to computer. Click Trust. Open JCID Repair Software and enter into Read Phone Interface. Infrared and Floodlight Code. <laughs> I don't necessarily like the uh, robotic voice that, that they put on this video, but this is a common issue that we run into with iPhone repairs where you have basically Face ID issues. And so here is one of the solutions and one of the easier solutions because it doesn't require extreme level of skill with micro soldering to fix the dot matrix and everything that's gone into that over the, over the years. Being able to simply use a programmer to solve for some of the issues that Face ID has makes life so much easier. Codes are normal. It means that the Face ID problem is mostly caused by dot matrix. Now let's repair the dot matrix. Remove the Face ID FPC. Step 1. Activate the original Face ID FPC. Buckle the X14PM Face ID Activation RW Adapter on V1S. Connect the adapter to power by PD Fast Charge Cable. The PD Fast Charger for the adapter must be with 9V2A input, output. Connect V1S to computer by Type-C USB cable. Connect mobile phone to computer by Type-C USB cable. Buckle the original Face ID FPC on the corresponding port of V1S. Open. J I like that they're not leaving anything out. Sometimes tutorial videos will leave little details out that will leave questions for later. So if you're following every step by step, this is, even though it's quick, from one step to the next, it's covering everything that you need to do <laughs> from plugging in the charger. I mean, come on. ACID repair software and enter into repair fitting interface. Click connect. Click detect. The result shows the chip fusing. Notes. Abnormal communication and face ID repair for the second time cannot be fixed by tag on face ID FPC. I like this as well. There are very specific faults that can be fixed using the tag on flex method. Uh, these other ones, the three, these abnormal communication, the chip and the flex cable require the extensive amount of work either replacing the flex cables themselves or even the chip. And I like the note section, it actually tells you what the proper triage for that particular repair is going to be versus the three at the bottom that he's gonna to get to with the check marks where it's abnormal NTC, the lightless lamp and the chip fusing uh, messages that you get, those can be fixed with the JC uh, uh, V1SE programmer that we're going over today. Other problems can be fixed by tag on face ID FPC. Click activate repair. Now let's check the requirements for activation. Connected with mobile phone and trusted. Original Face ID connected. PD fast charge of the adapter connected. Network status is good. Click Activate. When it shows, Activate Succeed. Remove the Face ID FPC. Step 2. Writing data. 
buckle the JCID face ID tag on FPC of the right model, on the corresponding port of V1S. Click, detect, on the computer. Click, write from AI, the iCloud file is named after the activation time by default, based on which users can judge and select the file that needs to be burned. So for those of you that don't know what's happening right now, basically what they were able to do when they went through, they extracted the data, and that's one of the reasons why the top three you can't have because either the chip is defective or the flex is a, is damaged in one way where you can't actually read the data. But if you can read the data, you copy the data. And when he went and clicked activation, it's actually fusing, sending a current into the, the dot matrix and fusing a component that basically otherwise would have the message or the the uh, the data that says activate the dot matrix or not so he's fusing burning literally burning the chip so that it 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 takes out having to disassemble it to manually do solder work on it so this bypasses that but you still need that data and that's where the tag in tag on flex comes in where you can write the data to that one so it's basically circumventing the whole system while still using the original front-facing camera assembly to activate Face ID. After confirming everything is well, click OK. When it shows burning is complete, remove the FPC. Step 3. Install the FPC. Now we buckle the tag on Face ID repair FPC with burned dot matrix data on the original Face ID FPC. There's always a bit of origami folding that goes on with these flex cables to make them fit inside such tight tolerances. Sometimes you have to make adjustments to the bracket, the position of the battery, um, things like that to get things to fit properly. Flatten the face ID FPC. Put up the upper front camera FPC. Infold the face ID FPC by 180 degrees. Lay down the front camera FPC. Buckle with the JCID tag on face ID FPC. Fasten with tape. Fold upper by 180 degrees. Fold the FPC upper by 90 degrees. And then fold down by 90 degrees. 12 Pro Max J J C I D Face ID tag on FPC installation done. Additional notes. If you need instructions of J C I D Face ID tag on FPC of all models, please visit J C I D official YouTube. HTTPS 2.B NGL 10S 6F. Check 6. Step 4. Install and test. Buckle the Face ID FPC with the JCID Face ID tag on FPC on the corresponding port of V1S. Click Test. When it shows the FPC function is normal, click off the FPC and install it in mobile phone. To have a component that shows a failure to come back to life with just simply going through this process is pretty amazing. Up until only recently, a few years ago, the only way to get around an issue like this with Face ID was to split the uh, components apart and repair them from the inside out. And although it was kind of satisfying to be able to do it and fix it and come through with it, it was still a lot of work. So having a solution like this that takes out of kind of all of the guesswork and all the hard work out of it, um, especially because you had to line up the crystal perfectly with the dot matrix at the right spacing, after making sure that you've soldered everything properly without really being able to test it without putting it back together, waiting for things to dry, cure, all of that stuff. To be able to avoid all of that is pretty, pretty amazing. I believe this model, the um, you do need to uh, make an adjustment to the one of the brackets because it'll otherwise get uh, interfere with the, the new tag on flex, uh, causing potentially causing you to potentially damage it. So um, little details that you need to look out for, but this is really, really quite, uh, really quite a cool tool.
Here is a metal shide covered on the 12 Pro Max Face ID FPC. Please cut off the positioning metal plate inside the shield before installation. Note. It's also necessary for 12 and 12 Pro to cut off the positioning plate inside the shield before installation. Don't need to do that for other models. Boot up the phone. Face ID input normally. Unlock screen normally. 12 Pro Max Face ID is repaired successfully. All right, so that was a quick video. And these tools, they seem to only be getting better and better and better. They're coming out with uh, new attachment boards with new tag on flexes for all sorts of different repairs. Now, if this is your first introduction to the JC uh, components, check out the website. You'll find on Mobilecentric's website that there is a ton of different products for the JC programmers and attachments and tag on flexes. And one of the things that I really like JC for as well is the board view and schematic software that they have. It's probably one of the best out there. It's my go-to and it pairs up with a lot of the programmers, which is kind of nice as well. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's a channel or a video that you'd like for me to review, I'll link it down below as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.